Hello, I'm Jocelyn Matthews. I am your host today from Eat Art Space. Um, this is my dining room gallery. I am based in Johnson City, Tennessee, and I have with me today Morgan Bakalitz, whose paintings are behind me. She's going to join me in a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk about her work, what inspires her, and find out more about the meaning behind all of these very fascinating surrealist landscapes. I want to remind everybody that the gallery is open for viewing by appointment. You can feel free to DM me here. There's also a phone number um, and an email address that you can schedule your appointment and come and see these paintings. Um, all of them are available for sale on the website. Please support local Appalachian artists and collect from them. Um, by doing so, you help to inspire the creativity and uplift the entire region. So in just a minute, we're going to talk with Morgan. I'm going to wave at her and invite her to join me if I can. So a little bit of her patience here. Invite to join. So I just sent Morgan the invitation because I sent her in the feed. Hello. Hey, how's it going? How is it going? How's your day? Um, yeah, it's going okay. It's going okay. So yeah. um, where are you at right now? I am in my apartment. Mm. Um, here is ah! my little studio space. Do you work out of your apartment exclusively or do you work elsewhere? Not exclusively. I work in um, the studio on campus. A lot. And where do you go to school? ETSU. Okay. Yeah. For, for our audience members. So. So. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you have here in the gallery in terms of like how you came to it and maybe a little bit about what your fascination with painting it is? So I, a couple years ago, um, took a class at ETSU called Visionary Landscapes um, where I was introduced to making landscapes that weren't necessarily um, extremely realistic. And I sort of fell in love with the idea of um, making spaces that you wouldn't necessarily see in real life, but have references to that. Ah. So all of these paintings are, um, and all of these, these two that I'm working on right now and the ones in the galleries are um, based off more subjective associations in my mind combined with more formal parallels in nature. And I'm sort of creating and making um, different plants and then combining them with plants you see in nature. So like this plant here is called Dutchman's Britches. Um, okay. It's a wildflower native to Tennessee and native to where I grew up. So this one is kind of a forest scene, I guess. Um, these probably are about 30 to 40% done. Okay. Um, so not done yet. They still have a lot of work to do on them. This one is kind of a mess. Um, as you can see, there's a big gaping hole in the middle of this canvas, in the middle of this <laughs> painting. And um, I plan to bring like this color. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but this is super bright. It and looks bright, but I'm sure in person, everything is everything is different when you see yeah, it in person. Yeah. So. And this color is super bright. And originally this was a flower painting um, with a, there was a big flower in the middle of the canvas. Um, and then you kind of had this middle ground behind it, but I was having a lot of trouble with that. And so I just covered it all up and made it into this hollow log. And now I'm thinking that it's maybe gonna be an underwater scene and I'm planning on, these two paintings are drying um, right now and I'll go back into them probably tomorrow. Um, but I wanna have some weird coral plants going on and maybe so, be... so you're not exclusively working, you're working with plants, not just in like the above ground landscape. You're talking about Right. Plants, all plant forms. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about, like, what did your work look like before you started coming into the visionary landscapes? What were your, like, tell me your origin story there. Um, I mean, in terms of, like, college work, 
this is a master copy. Okay. Um, I, as you can see, I mean, I'm not going to pull out that big abstract. That's, <laughs> a, that's a five by seven abstract. If we go over here, this is another abstract. Um, so have you been working at, you were working abstractly beforehand and then transitioned into this sort of pseudo realistic yeah. or representational? Yeah. I, I knew that I didn't um, want to, and not to say that like the figure is out of the question, um, but I'd, I'm not really interested in the figure right now. And so that's why I don't really have a lot of figural work. And um, abstraction for me is a place where I can experiment. And like originally, that's why I liked abstract work. And then I figured out that I can kind of mesh these two um, places together where I'm at. So why painting then? Why painting above anything else? I, I really like how I can treat paint um, a lot of, with more dry materials you don't have a lot of um, you know you can't thicken graphite and have actual texture I like the texture of the paints I like how paint moves I like pushing it around what were some of your first experiences related to making art or working with materials that you connect to your current art practice? Well, I've kind of always been into art. Um, I, pre-college, I grew up um, taking as many art classes as I could in school, um, which there were only like two offered um, mm. So I took all two of them and it was great. And I, for a while, was really into mixed media um, because I liked working with my hands. And then I sort of fell into acrylic painting and then transitioned into oil painting. So, so tell me about, you know, you're moving through these different kinds of paintings. Um, there's a whole, you know, some people move back and forth between the two. Why oil specifically? I don't really know that I can answer that question. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm comfortable with oil. I, I like how in oil paint, um, it's, a, it's slower drying than acrylic. And so you can do, in my opinion, more. Um, mm. I mean, not to say that you can't do a lot with acrylic. I mean, I'm sure that you can. Um, I'm just not like super, super experienced. I don't really like how acrylic feels like in my hands or on the brush. Um, so that feeling is very important and it is a deeply personal preference. But, you know, yeah. some people have a rationale and some people just have a an intuitive preference. Yeah. So I'm always curious to know what you know, with a makeup or how it informs, um, yeah, how it informs think, your work. Um, I think oil for me, at least right now, is a lot more, I'm working in this sort of intuitive process where I lay a bunch of color down, um, I tone the canvas, and then I wipe away really intuitively, and, um, and then I go back in Sorry, my cat yeah. is <laughs> getting into something. A maniac right now. <laughs> um, here he is. This Aww. is the culprit. Studio cat. What's your cat's name? Uh, Theodore Graham. Theodore Graham. Teddy Graham After for short. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, would you take us through um, how did you decide to create new plant life what prompted you to move into that i mean besides the the visionary landscape class is part of the prompting but what you know what in your personal world are you pulling from specifically to create these yeah i'm not um visionary landscapes wasn't so much as um like it was sure it was creating forms that didn't necessarily reference nature but Somewhere along the way, I sort of found out how to um, put paint
paint down on a surface on a canvas and then I convinced myself that it didn't necessarily need to look extremely realistic. Um, mm -hmm. And when I, whenever I would have trouble um, making something like super realistic, you know, it would sort of help me to not make that form like how it actually looked, I guess. Sort of let it be a little bit more loose and interpretive. Yeah, and ambiguous. So I'm curious to know about some of the titles of these pieces. Can we tour around the gallery and you can talk about where the titles come from? Yeah. Sweet. So let's talk about this one behind me and I'll flip the camera so that folks can see it a little bit more in detail. This one is called So Much and No More, Never More Than a Spot or Something May Happen You Never Know What. So yeah, what um, <laughs> that is from dr seuss is a fish out of water okay and in in this piece um towards the if you look at the bottom uh right in the middle you see that form that's um right there it's is it here yeah yeah so that in my mind i'm not sure if the viewer gets this but that is a dead fish and um, the stream, that sort of path, I was thinking, is um, sort of a stream. And this fish is just kind of dead there. So this is the stream coming through. Yeah. yeah. So you have a narrative, or at least you know what these things, you know what these things are. Yeah. I'm not canvas. sure that the viewer does all the time, though. Is that but... important to you? Is a narrative. Um, no, is it important that the viewer knows what's in there? Not necessarily. Um, I have a narrative myself for each of my paintings. Um, and I think it's fun when people come up with their own narratives. So. So the fish out of water has resulted in death for this particular painting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, not that I should be laughing about that, but <laughs> let's talk about this one, which is called Before the Breaking. This one um, was a response to a story that one of my other classmates wrote, and I'm not really sure where the title came from, um, I guess there's a big storm brewing in the distance um, for this one. And I had a lot of trouble with the foreground in this one, making it um, balancing the right, um, I guess, amount of whimsy in my piece. Because I feel like I, at one point I had too much and then not enough. And before the breaking sort of comes from like before the storm. So. so you mentioned whimsy in your pieces. Um, I, I definitely would connect with that way of describing your landscapes, but I know that <laughs> there's a piece in here that was not necessarily whimsical that has since sold. There's a vacant spot. Um, and the title was After Beardstadt. And can you um, elaborate on that piece? Is it is that connected to this uh, particular series? It was a representational mountain painting and... Um... Yeah, that one isn't, um, that was my first landscape that I ever did. And it taught me a lot about um, how, to, how to paint a landscape and um, how to handle depth and atmospheric perspective in a painting. And I, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily like connected, connected, but I think it has some ties to um, the representation in my later pieces. Thanks for asking that, like answering that. Um, that really, really particular question that the audience might not understand because they, they can't see the, the image that I'm talking about. So coming over here, we have one of your I think guess this one, I guess this one is the largest one. 
yeah. in the in the in the, this current show. Um, this is about thirty nine by forty eight, and it's called "My Mind Was Running Through the Woods Instead." Now, that's, so, that seems to me to be a pretty straightforward title, but can you yeah. tell us a little bit about what's going on in this piece for you? Yeah, this one, the title came from song lyrics. Um, I'm really into listening to folk music. Um, I like to call it granola music. And um, a lot of the time when I'm painting, I'm listening to these folksy songs. And this one was also one of my first landscapes that I did. And I mean, looking at it now, it definitely has its like quirks and problems um, that I could find better solutions to. So. Well, I mean, this is your growth, right? We, we make different yeah. decisions with each piece and this is, you know, a fantastically moody and fascinating landscape, so. Yeah. Okay, moving over here, we've got, it came creeping, creeping out of the valley thinking I did not notice. And this is like, you have these really sort of twisted and tormented limbs here. Yeah. Um, this one was a response to, and the, the title is from, um, the title and the painting both are responses to Kate Chopin's and I came slowly. Um, it's a poem. And in the poem, she talks about this gigantic tree in the, like laying under a tree. Um, and I sort of wanted to do a big tree. And then I did this, I was stuck on the painting and I had nowhere to go. And I did a pour of paint, which is where you mix a bunch of solvent and then a bunch of medium. I use Galkid um, in addition to the oil paint and it makes it really runny. And then I poured it all over and then it sort of became this creeping night. So can you talk a little bit about what it's like, like what you read and you collect these um, literary references? Do you, are you intentional about like what you're focusing on there that feeds into your work? Are, are there things you gravitate to and that you pull from to put into these canvases or is it all sort of um, what I, you happen to come across? I think it's um, sort of intuitive if I'm, reading a book at the time or scrolling through Instagram and I see a word or a quote or a phrase um, that I particularly like, then I will save it and or write it down or take a picture of it, whatever. Um, and then sometimes I'll go back to them and sometimes they get lost in okay. my camera roll. Yeah. Uh, I definitely know about losing things in your camera roll. Yeah. <laughs> But um, what are you reading right now that is really inspiring you? Or what did you read most recently that's inspiring your work? Um, let me see here. <laughs> I am reading this book. Ah, okay. I Have am you read it? With that. I've read it. Yes, I yeah. read it a few years ago. Yeah. It's, it's um, one of my mom's favorites. And she really liked it and was like, OMG, Morgan, you have to read this book. Um, and so I've been slowly getting through it. Yeah, but, it's, it's not something that you can race through. Yeah. But Braiding Sweetgrass is, it. I would recommend that book as well. It's very um, deep and thought provoking yeah. and nature centered. So it fits mm -hmm. with your work as well. Yeah. And um, I've, I've been trying to read more books on meditating in nature and like walking through the forest and connecting with the things around you. So. Have you ever heard of the book on looking? Mm -mm. It's another one of those attention focused books. <laughs> yeah. A book about attention that you have to pay attention to in order to learn more about attention. Um, right. right. <laughs> so, 
Would you like to, to share any of your particular other, other art? Like what, who are your favorite artist inspirations living or dead? So at, in this point in time, they don't um, have to be here forever and ever amen ones. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a lot of people I look at. I'm in terms of contemporary artists, I'm looking towards um, Inca Essen High, Kyle Staver and the way that she uses paint and treats paint and handles um, subject matter. You may have frozen for just a minute. So I'm going to flip things around and hopefully take us on a little tour to show some of Morgan's other work that's on display in the gallery. Are you back? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. good. I, I, have a, I have a big list of artists in my notes app. So oh, I was looking so you at had that. to go and refresh some. Okay. Yes. Tell us um, more. Yeah. I, I follow a lot of artists on Instagram. And not to say that, like, I don't look at art books or anything like that, but... I feel like Instagram is a really good um, way of connecting and seeing other people's work. Well, especially with living so, artists who are making things now. Yeah. It takes a long time for artists to get their work into a book. Right. So. Right. <laughs> but in terms of historical doing. artists, I look at Peter Bruegel a lot in terms of how he sort of shrinks his figures um, and has sort of these cold, um, vast, spacey landscapes. Um, I look at Beardstadt, I look at Thomas Cole for atmospheric perspective and depth. So it's got a little bit of that atmospheric perspective going on right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So who would you like to give um, any shout outs to or um, you know, in and around your art community right now? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly. That's okay. I think That's I would, okay. I think I would have to think about that. No problem. You can like add it in the comments later or something. Okay. Is there anything else that you really want your viewers and your audience to know about these works um, or what you're intending to make moving forward yeah so i'm working a little smaller than i have right now um these pieces in front of me are not too big they're like 16 by 20 um but i'm planning on within the next couple of weeks starting bigger pieces working like four by five um so. a little more like this yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have to that's a, away from it. That's a, they'll be a little bigger than that. That's this is more of a, this is more of a three by four. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Almost three by four. Um, if I stand right it, next to it, you can get a sense of how I can be swallowed I, by it. I'd like to, <laughs> um, make, I'll see how these bigger ones go bigger than that 30 by 40. And if they go well, then I'd like to transition into making like five by seven pieces. But those are a little hard because it, I would have to paint them at the campus studio um, and I can't exactly strap that big of a painting to my car. So, and I, yeah, space... I, look like an, I look like an absolute clown trying to carry that canvas across campus. I mean, for what it's worth, um, you are not alone in strapping yeah. canvases <laughs> to your car. Um, so yeah. yeah, artists all over the place are, they struggle with space. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, that's the definitely. artist struggle for sure. Well, Morgan, it's, I've just so enjoyed seeing your studio and your works in progress. I'm really excited about those um, pieces and how they're going to resolve themselves. Yeah, me and too. it's been a delight to have your work in the gallery. Um, is there anything else that you want to make sure you say to people before we sign off for the day? Um, I think that's <laughs> about it. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah, and please feel free to stop by the gallery in person. Send me a direct message or ask Morgan how to get here. Um, and, um, you know, 
buy the work. There's a link in the bio and there's some, you know, yeah, please. Very, very affordably priced pieces. <laughs> so, um, and they're really fun. I mean, like, look at this. I actually kind of match. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Morgan, for your time and for the gift of your art. And I look forward to seeing what comes from you in the future. Yeah, me too. All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye for now.